Hi, my name is Eloise. So far in the series, we've used the properties of quadrilaterals to form definitions for different types of quadrilaterals. And we've proved a conjecture about the angles of a kite using transformation geometry, and then we wrote the proof in a paragraph. Today, we're going to look at a different way of writing a proof. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to write a flowchart proof using statements and reasons. A paragraph proof lets you write down everything just as you would explain it to someone. The problem is it can be long and wordy, making it difficult to follow. So today we're going to look at another way of writing proofs, called flowchart proofs. A flowchart is a chart that shows the flow of something. You could show the flow of how a structure works with a flowchart. Or you could show the links between facts using a flowchart. Here's an example of a flowchart showing the reporting structure in one school. Working from the bottom, we can see that teachers report to a head of department or HOD. All the HODs then report to the principal. And the principal, in turn, reports to the school governing body. And here's another example of a flowchart, this time showing the flow of events in the Earth's water cycle. It tells you what causes what in the cycle. Some things are much easier to see and understand in a diagram than in a long written explanation, and that's where flowcharts come in. They are easier to understand when there's a lot of information to be given. Compare the flowchart of the school reporting structure to this paragraph giving us exactly the same information. As you can see, it's much easier to understand the information in the flowchart than in the paragraph. Flowchart would make your studying in many subjects easier. If you can get your information onto a flowchart, that will be so much clearer and easier to study than pages and pages of information. When it comes to geometry flowchart proofs, we don't show a flow of reports or events. We show the flow of reasoning. Moving from one step to another, we show how we reach our conclusion. Let me show you what I mean with an example. In this diagram, we are asked to prove that RT is parallel to KL. But before we can write a proof, we need to plan it. When planning your proof, it's useful to first identify your starting point and your end point or your goal. Then you can work backwards from the end point to build your proof. So where would we start with our proof? Obviously, it makes sense to start with what we already know. We know that angle A is equal to angle F. How do we know this? Because it's given to us. We know that they're both equal to 50 degrees. Our end point is to prove that RT is parallel to KL. So this will become the conclusion. Working backwards, there are three ways we can prove lines RT and KL are parallel. We can prove that the alternate angles are equal, or the corresponding angles are equal, or the co-interior angles are supplementary. If we can prove any one of these to be true, then the lines will be parallel. So let's look for clues in the diagram. We can use angle F or angle A somehow to get to an angle that is alternate, corresponding or co-interior. Let's look at one way of doing it. Do you see that angle C is equal to angle A? How do we know this? Because they are vertically opposite angles, and vertically opposite angles are equal. 
So if A equals F and A equals C, it follows that angle C equals angle F because both are equal to angle A. Angle C and angle F are corresponding angles. So if they are equal, then lines RT and KL must be parallel. So we have planned our proof just by talking through it and making notes on the diagram. These were our premises. These angles are given equal. Premise 1. Angle C equals angle A. Premise 2. They lead to the conclusion that angle C equals angle F. Finally, this conclusion leads to the conclusion that RT is parallel to KL. Do you see that we now have two premises leading to a conclusion that leads on to our final conclusion? Now we are ready to put together a flowchart proof to show how we solved the problem. The first thing that has to be said is that angle A is equal to angle F. Reason? Given. Another thing we noticed is that angle A is equal to angle C. Reason? Vertically opposite angles are equal. These two facts together lead us to a new statement which is that angle C is equal to angle F. The reason for this is that they are both equal to angle A. Because angles A and F are corresponding angles that are equal, we now know that RT is parallel to KL. So our final conclusion is a direct result of the previous statement alone. And we knew that would happen when we planned the proof. So here's our final flowchart proof. It has two premises leading to a conclusion. And this conclusion itself tells us something else, which is what we set out to prove. In geometry, for each premise, or statement, we also give our reasons for making that statement. After every statement you make or write down, ask yourself, how do I know that? And write down the reason. Sometimes you will even need a reason for the conclusion. So your proof is written like this. Premise 1. Reason for saying that. Premise 2. Reason for saying that. Conclusion. Reason for saying this if it is needed. But please keep in mind that the proof we have just done was about a particular diagram with some angles given. It can't be called a theorem because it doesn't prove anything about all parallel lines. It only proves this specific case. Now let's look at another example before you try your own. In the last lesson, Cindy and Gerard used conjectures about kites to come up with a paragraph proof that showed one pair of angles of any kite are equal. They proved this by showing that a kite can be made from a scalene triangle reflected along one of its sides. Now let's find another proof for the same theorem, this time using Euclidean geometry. Then once we've planned our proof, we'll write it as a flowchart proof. But unlike the last example, we're going to show a proof of a theorem. In other words, something that's true for all kites. And remember, when proving theorems, we always start by saying what is given and what the conjecture is that we want to prove. So we begin by writing down the starting point, given kite, K-I-T-E, and to prove angle K equals angle T. So proving angle K equals angle T is our end point. If we can prove this, we have proved our conjecture about the one pair of angles of a kite. Now for this proof, we need to add a construction to kite K-I-T-E, so we must note that down. We will join I and E with the line IE. Now we've created two triangles, KIE and TIE. 
If we can show that they're congruent, we can show that the angles K and T will be equal. We can see that these two sides are equal, and these two sides are equal. We know these two facts because they are adjacent sides of a kite, and the definition of a kite tells us that the adjacent sides are equal. So this is what our flowchart looks like so far. We also know that this side is common to both triangles. And when all three sides of a triangle are equal to the three sides of another triangle, we know that the two triangles are congruent, fulfilling the side, side, side criteria. Therefore, triangle KIE is congruent to triangle TIE. So we can add this to our flowchart. Congruent triangles have all their corresponding sides and angles equal, so we can conclude that these two angles must be equal. Adding this fact completes our flowchart. And this is what it would look like as a paragraph proof. When you compare the two, you can see how much easier the flowchart proof is to follow. For your task today, take your paragraph proof from the last task, the one about the angles being bisected by the diagonal, and use it to make a flowchart proof. Well, that's it for today's lesson. Until next time, keep investigating.